Hello everyone, I am Erika of BeadingSchool.com and you are watching No One Has to Bead Alone, my weekly free video workshop on Facebook to make sure that all beaders can have company while creating beautiful beads no matter where are you and what's the time at your place. It's just a matter of coffee if it's too early when you are in New Zealand or staying up late. So I hope you can hear me. I hope you can see me. I see Liv and Katya. I see a Facebook user, friend. At the moment, I am broadcasting simultaneously at two places. On my own Facebook page, Beating School by Erika Shandon, and also in the Seed Beads and More Facebook group, as in May, I have the pleasure and honor to be your guest teacher. And in case that you are watching from the Seed Beads and More Facebook group, then you need to click that very first link that I have posted so I can see your face, I can see your name, and then I can say, hello, Ludka, and hi, Claire, and hello, Faye, and Kata is here, and Frida is here. Welcome, ladies, wonderful to have you here. And Donna, if I haven't, sa uh, if I haven't said your name, then it means that uh, you need to click that link that I have mentioned as I can't see you and I can't uh, read your name. Deb, Verle, Julie, good morning, good afternoon. Good morning, very, very early morning to Faye. 3 a.m. Faye is the hero of the broadcast. <laughs> So today we are going to work together on the Louisiana motif. You can see it on the picture. You can also see it as I am wearing half of my earring. Uh, I got many nice recommendations last week for how to name the motif and I chose the Louisiana uh, name and thank you so much for everyone for the suggestions and hi Belinda and Sandra and Linda and Santa, Janine, Eleanor, Denise, Gunnel, Miriam, Teresa. Welcome ladies. So today is the fourth and final time that I can uh, be here with you with the No One Has To Be The Lone Lesson in the Seed Beads and More group. We have beaded together already three different motifs. Today, the fourth one is coming. So today we are going to work on the Louisiana. Last week we did the Electrica, we had the Margaret, and before that, we had the attitude motif. And now you can see all four of them on the picture. And I am very curious to hear which one did you like the most? And while I am waiting for your answers, I want to say that how much pleasure it made uh, for me, it brought me, and how fun it was to see all your beautiful uh, creations during this month. I would like to thank you for showing up uh, each and every time. And I would like to thank you for your dedication, for beading with me, for embarking on this journey of creative bead embroidery and beading also these small motifs on Fridays. And it, was, it is wonderful. It was and still is wonderful to see all your versions that you have made. And I hope that that you are very, very proud of yourself because you did lots and lots of progress and you created beautiful jewels. And so big applause to everyone who, who participated.
and I'm still looking forward to see your creations also during the upcoming time. The videos, all of the videos, they will stay online in the Seed Beads and More group. So even if you didn't have time to bid everything now, then you can return later and you can do all the different topics later. Uh, they will also later go up on my own YouTube channel, so it will be easy to find them. It's Beading School by Erika Shandor. And I am looking forward to see seeing your creations in the future too. And in the meanwhile, Honey joined us and Jeannie and Joanna and Shirley and Mektab. Verle, and Maria, Brit Marie. <laughs> Guna says she likes the Louisiana the most. Maria likes all of these motifs. And Faye liked the attitude, attitude the most. Sandra also liked the attitude. And Ginny too. And thank you, ladies. Katya likes today's. <laughs> Thank you so much. Annie, hi. Belinda liked Marguerite. You know what, uh, what is funny, ladies? That sometimes I just really feel that, oh my God, this will be your favorite. But today you surprised me by saying that you liked attitude the most. I liked beading it, but... Out of these four, it's not my favorite, I have to say. My favorite is Louisiana. Shirley likes Electrica. And hi, Sherry. <laughs> Deb also liked the attitude. Donna likes Louisiana. <laughs> it's nice that everyone can find a favorite and then make it in his or her favorite colors and make the design is or her own. So today we are going to be Louisiana. But before we would start, I would like to invite you for a goodbye video next Monday at the same time as today to the Seed Beads and More group and also broadcast it on my own Facebook page. So uh, it will be at the, as the, at the same time as today and it will be a goodbye for the Seed Beads and More group. And I also have a big announcement to make. Uh, so I would like to share it with as many of you during a live video as possible. So I am really looking forward to meeting you there. And so uh, let's start beading. <laughs> Today we are going to work on the Louisiana motif. Let me show you a bigger picture and let's see what do you need for your Louisiana. So you will need one or two colors of four millimeter Preciosa bicone beads. I have used Deep Tanzanite AB twice and I have used Chrysalid Opal. I'm going to show you what's on my bead mat. So this is the Deep, deep Tanzanite AB twice and this is the Chrysalid Opal. And you can either use one color or two colors. It's up to you. Then you will also need some Miyuki Delica beads. And I put on my bead mat only one color, but I will actually, I have used two colors in my original. And I want to complete my earrings. So I use the same colors. So you will need one or two colors of Miyuki Delica size 11 seed beads. Then 
you will need also Miyuki half tila beads. I have this mustard yellow mat. Then you will need some three millimeter fire polished beads. I have opaque white topaz pink cluster. It's one of my favorite colors lately. Then you need also size 15 Miyuki round seed beads. I have the dark bronze and you need size 11 round seed beads, a couple of pieces. And that container is empty as you can see. Do you know that feeling when you barely have enough to finish your piece? And then you are like looking around everywhere to find one more, just one more or two more. So I am able to finish it. So this was my case today with the, uh, with the size 11 Miyuki round seed beads that I had to like look on, look at my old bead mat where I, where I have some leftover beads so I can finish my uh, my earring and then it's up to you that how do you finish the motif as you can see i have made it into a nice long earring i love long earrings those are my favorites and i used a nice uh, earring hook with crystal uh, with cubic zirconia and then in this uh, with a navet shape of the cubic zirconia and then to continue this elongated part i have used the <laughs> elongated crystal connector in rose opal and at this moment i thought that this could also be an earring it would look nice or also just the earring hook and the motif i think but then I continued building it and then came a cushion cut uh, a crystal connector. I don't know if you have noticed that I said cushion and not cushion for the first time in my life, I think. I just recently discovered we are often laughing about my pronunciation <laughs> as English is not my first or second language. So... That's a new discovery for me that it said cushion. Was, was my pronunciation right now? That it's cushion or something like that and not cushion. <laughs> and then when we were talking, I was making this, when we were talking about all the filigree components, we had a coffee time with Erica two weeks ago when we were talking about the all the possibilities, how you can include filigree components in your beadwork. And I told you that you can use filigree components instead of a drop or together with a drop, as you can see, but I didn't have an example. So then I decided to include also a filigree component uh, uh, and a drop at the bottom of the earring. And in the meanwhile, Sarah is here. By the way, Sarah is a champion. This is going to be, she's just checking in today, but at least she's checking in. But this is going to be the first time that she's not beating with us in one year. Sarah, you rock, seriously. It's amazing. <laughs> If you will have time one day, you need to take a picture of all your novel and has to be the long jewels together. <laughs> and in the meanwhile, Elena is here. Oh, wonderful to have you, Elena. Teresa is here. Catherine, Sharon is here. And uh, Meta is here. Oh, and you you know the feeling when you are you are you are looking for the last bits. Miriam says this happened to me with my turquoise embroidery cuff. It's beautiful, by the way. I had to cheat because of Vandalika. Unbelievable, but true. And Betty Lou is here. And no, Teresa, I didn't mean that you are laughing at my English, but like 
yeah, we are laughing together. I can laugh at myself. <laughs> and I know that it's not perfect. <laughs> and Cheryl is here. Welcome, Cheryl. So let's start reading, ladies. Shall we? <laughs> so I am continuing with my previous color combination. I'm all prepared with my tulip beading needle and with my 0.126 LB fireline about a wingspan. And Corinne, hi, welcome. And let's start beading. And I'm curious, by the way, ladies, that if you are beading earrings like I did, or a pendant or bracelets, because everything can be done from this motif. <laughs> so we start by picking up six pieces of round 11 seed beads and six pieces of four millimeter bicon beads interchangeably. One round 11, one bicon, one round 11, one bicon, and so on. By the way, I think that this color is not online at beadingschool.com yet, but I'm pretty much in love with it. We got some two ABs recently, and they are going going online soon. I think you will like them a lot. I'm loving it. <laughs> so now I have the six pieces of the four millimeter bicons, six pieces of the round 11s, and I bead through everything one more time to create a circle. And then I bead through the very first bead or beads, because I bead through a round 11 and then a bicon bead for a third time. So I am exiting the very first bicon bead that I have added. And I have this circle with six bicons, with six round 11s, and I have a 10, 12 centimeters long or five, six inches long tail that I will secure later. And, 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 and Joanna is making a pendant. So nice to see you here, Joanna. I know that you are very busy lately. And Miriam says, to we are so beautiful. I agree, and we got like Capri Blue 2AB and Emerald 2AB and so on. So I think they will match the L2 Studio cabochons that we have now in the collections very nicely. <laughs> so, and in step two, I am going to connect, I am connecting the uh, round 11, sorry, I'm exiting a round 11 seed bead, not a bicon bead after step one. So I am going to connect now the round 11 seed beads with groups of four Miyuki Delica 11s. I, exit, I am exiting a round 11 seed bead. I pick up four Miyuki Delica beads in my first color, and then I bead through the next round 11 seed bead. So there is like a kind of a V shape around the bicone bead. And Petra is here, and Niti is here. Niti says, hi there, ladies. Wishing you a very nice time. You got to make something really beautiful again. Big hugs. Oh, Nitty, big hugs to you and Martin and the baby and the kitties. Oh, I hope to see you soon. <laughs> Berle is going to use crystal AB two times today. 
<laughs> Lots of bling. When I'm adding the groups of Miyuki Delica, then I actually keep a pretty tight thread tension. So the round 11s, they move a little bit outwards from the circle. So I pick up the four Delica beads, I beat so around, through a round 11, and I pull the thread quite tightly, quite tight. After we manage to correct all my big pronunciation mistakes, then we can move on to uh, my tight, tightly, and continuous or single present. <laughs> if anyone will still be in the mood for some grammar lessons. <laughs> oh, Elena says, I will use the colors from the Preciosa firebox, red, orange, and gold. Oh, <laughs> I have to say that I think the firebox from the Preciosa boxes they are the ones out of the six that found like uh, that were uh, that uh, that were the least popular out of the six that we that we have had. But then very very often in the reviews and in the feedback that we got from you, bidders said you said that. Oh my God, this was a great, uh, it was a brave choice. But once I had it, then it was like love. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you create from it, Elena. Tanya was working with it uh, last week and combined it with purple, I think. And it came out beautiful. <laughs> So, and at the end of step two, I added the last group of four Miyuki Delicas, and then I move on and I bead it through the round 11 seed bead, and I move on and I bead also through the first two Delica beads that I have added. If anyone in the meanwhile needs to download the tutorial, the printed tutorial, then I have just posted the link again where you can download it from. So it makes so it makes following the lesson easier for you. And now, as I am exiting, the first two Delica beads out of a group of four, I pick up a Miyuki half Tila bead. Take care that the Miyuki half Tilas have a flat side and a bumpy side. So ideally, you want the bumpy side facing the top of the pendant or earring or whatever you are making. So you pick up a Miyuki half tila and then you attach it with square stitch to the two Miyuki Delica beads that you are exiting. So you bead it through the two Delica beads, you picked up the half tila and then you bead through the two Delica beads one more time. So you make a little loop with your needle and that's how you attach the half tila to the delica beads. And to make this connection sturdier, you need to repeat the exact same thread path. So you go one more time through the half tila and one more time through the pair of Miyuki delica beads. And you will 
add, you will attach a Miyuki half tila beads to every pair of Miyuki delica, but between two pairs in the middle of a group of four delica beads, you always need to add around 15 seed bead. So now I am exiting this first pair of Miyuki Delica beads. I pick up a Miyuki round 15 and then I bead through the other two Miyuki Delicas. You need to be careful when you pull your thread that the half tila should not sit on top of the Miyuki Delica beads and cover the Miyuki Delicas, but next to them. So when you look at the uh, motif from the front, then everything should be visible next to each other by con bead, Miyuki Delica, and half tila. And now I can add the next half tila again with square stitch. And I repeat the thread path. And I beat through the round 11 and two more delica beads. So then I get into position and I can add the next mm, Miyuki half tila. So, was it clear how I explained it? And what is it clear from the illustration, ladies? Please let me know if this part is, is okay. Shirley says, I am working with very different colors for me. Champagne bicons, cream delicas, and pink silk half tilas. It sounds like a very soft, romantic piece. I'm curious, Shirley. And what will it be? Will it be a pendant or earrings or maybe a bracelet? Okay, thanks, Kata. Thanks, Eleanor. Thank you, ladies. Oritic Creation. I don't know what's your name, but thank you for saying that it's clear. <laughs> Belinda, thank you. So as you move around, you will be adding all together 12 pieces of Miyuki half tilas. Orit, okay, Orit Creation says that Orit is her name. <laughs> Thank you. So, what are you ladies going to make from this? I got an answer from... Uh, from Joanna that she's making a pendant, but I don't see any more. <laughs> and I'm curious. Thank you, Katya. <laughs> With my other piece, while I was Mm, writing the instructions yesterday, then I beaded another color combination. I beaded it with the, oh, I think those are the emerald 2AB or with the 2AB, I'm not always 100% sure. It's hard to tell, <laughs> but uh, I beaded a new color combination. And then I attached it to a filigree brooch base. I still, I think I will add a bit of glue because I am in this case not, not happy with how I secured it with my thread, but luckily I can, uh, 
I can uh, uh, attach it with, with, with glue. It's not a problem. And it was really funny to read that as I showed this second motif in the beading school club, then Katy and also other beaders said that they like this color combination more than my original. And I'm so not comfortable somehow with this one. Now I am thinking like I should have added Fuchsia 2AB instead of Delight Sapphire Opal. <laughs> And in the meanwhile, I see some answers. Thank you so much, ladies. And is beating a pendant. Corinne is making earrings, of course. <laughs> Catalin will start with earrings, but she doesn't know yet that where does very will it end. When Kata is on fire, and not only with her colors, then on Monday when I come back online, then I sometimes see full sets of jewelry. Donna did not make a decision yet. Belinda will make earrings. Miriam will see later. Maktab will uh, make a pendant. By the way, big applause to Maktab. I don't know if you have seen her bead embroidery pieces, but I want to say that Maktab, you should be super proud of yourself. I know that you were not so comfortable with bead embroidery very, when you started with it last year, but you are building very, very, very beautiful pieces now. So they are wonderful. I'm glad that you, I'm glad that you took, took the step. And Sherry will make earrings. Dev uh, did not make a decision yet. Katya will make earrings. Sherry will have one motive, but she does not know whether it will be a pendant ring or a start to a bead embroidery thing. As Sherry mentions, you can actually use this motive also in your bead embroidery. It is absolutely possible to combine different techniques. I have here the Jenny's J pendant that I made last year. And my friend Zuzi, she attached in her version another beaded motif in the middle of the filigree. And I think that even she used the melodrama motif, but I, as I am looking at it now, I think even uh, the Louisiana would look great in this one. Brit Marie is watching. Only Faye will make earrings probably. She's using teal and black and red AB and yellow and metallic purple and gray and silver. Lots of colors. Eleanor did not make a decision yet. Jonna will make earrings. Shirley too. Zuzi is here. She just picked her colors. I hope you are well too, Zuzi. Annie will make... Uh, mm -mm. Oh, thank you, Annie. <laughs> Teresa will make a pendant. Or it too. Julie did not make a decision yet. Oh, she broke a bead. Sometimes it's sometimes it's the best you can do to put it aside and return to it when when uh, the frustration passed. Sometimes it's not not the best to to push it. <laughs> Lutka is also watching for now. Ginny says that her strategy is, I, st I will not show now the comments because then I need my hands for showing the comments and I don't progress, don't make any progress with my beading. So now I will return to my beading, but I keep an eye on your comments. So Lutka also says, 
that she is now uh, for now watching and listening. Maria will make earrings. Ginny has a strategy of first beading the motif and then she will know what the motif want to, wants to become. By the way, if I am mentioning comments that you don't see, it is because the broadcast, you can watch the broadcast, the, the class from the Seed Beads and More group and also from my own Facebook page. And my program makes it possible for me to see all the comments coming in from those places. So that's why. And thank you, Zuzi, for joining us. Zuzi is actually also a member of our creative team and she's helping out a lot these days. For example, she wrote a nice new article for the Beading School blog. It was actually, it's, the, it's an article from the series Face to Face. And it was, I think, the first, one of the first articles, one of the first series that I started six years ago when, it, when the Storytelling Jeweler blog was born. And I started to do interviews with designers and beaters. But then, because of lack of time, I had to stop with it. And now, since luckily the Bidding Squad team is growing and Zuzi is also helping, then we could restart the series of the face-to-face -face interviews. And if you go to biddingschool.com and you navigate to the blog, then you will find an interview with one of our beaders, Aniko Hess, and you can read about her beadwork. You can see some pictures that where is she working. You can read about it, how she's uh, developing her career as a beaded jewelry maker. She's selling beautiful pieces in a very nice designer boutique in Budapest in the Hungarian capital. And she answered Susie's questions. And you can read now about Aniko on the Beading School blog. <laughs> Kathy liked the article, she says. <laughs> so now I am adding the last round 15 seed bead and the last half tila. Connie says she loves Aniko's work. I think it's super special. Like her technical skills are awesome, but she also has an eye for colors and how she how she finishes everything in a special way. That's, I think, very unique. And, and I don't want to wonder that. Uh, I'm not surprised that, uh, that her work is so popular between the visitors of the, of the boutique. She's doing an awesome job with making jewelry. And also, she's super kind. <laughs> So after adding the last Miyuki half tila, I want to start the next step from around 15 Miyuki seed bead that I have just added. And I will connect now the round 15 seed bead to the open hole of the Miyuki half tila with three 
size 11 Miyuki Delicas. I don't add anything between the two half tilas, so I bead through the open holes of both half tilas, and then again I pick up three Miyuki Delicas, I bead through the round 15, and then I move on and frame basically the next petal of the flower with groups of three Miyuki Delica beads. And Teresa also says that she loves Aniko's work. I think it's it's absolutely beautiful. And hello, Facebook user. Thank you so much. And Jana says, if you see comments from uh, the Seed Bits and More group and Beading School, how many of us are there to tell today? Or is the number we see on Beading School for both? No, you see it from the place that you are watching from. So I see it here in the broadcasting program together. And I see at the moment 58 beaders who are beading together today. And that's wonderful. And Joanna and Sherry also love Aniko's work. <laughs> Sometimes she's also here with us during the evening, but I think not today. <laughs> So, how is the Louisiana motif coming together, ladies? Still clear everything, or do you have a question? And, yeah, Jana says, wonderful, so many of us can be together. It is a very, very nice experience. <laughs> and Cheryl says, I hope that those from Seed Beads and More will join us in the club next month when the event is over. Thank you for mentioning that, Cheryl, actually. So even if the broadcasts, the videos will not be available in the Seed Beads and More group, I mean the live ones will not happen here, I would like to invite everyone to join the next No One Has to Be The Loan, which will be available on the Beading School page, Beading School by Erica, and also in the Beading School Club. And we basically do the same. We started last year in March, and since then, we beat together just like now during this special month with seed beads and more. We beat together a design every week. And we skipped, I think, only a couple of weeks last year. We started in March and we beaded more than 30 designs last year and still going strong. <laughs> And I hope that many of you will join us. Kata also likes the article with, with Aniko. Teresa and Valinda says that the tutorial is still clear. Thank you. And Susie, Susie promises that there will be more articles coming. Sherry needs to go now. Have a wonderful weekend, Sherry. So I finished step five. I added the groups of three Miyuki Delicas all around, and I finished by beading through the very first group that I have added. And now I move on to adding more bicon beads. And that's a great part. I love adding my gold beads. <laughs> so, and those are some more. So I pick up 
around 15, I pick up a three millimeter fire polished bead around 11, another three millimeter fire polished bead and another round 15. And now I bead only through the first Delica bead from the group on the other side of the pair of Miyuki half tila beads. I pick up a Preciosa bicone bead, a four millimeter one, and then I bead again only through one Miyuki Delica bead. My thread is hanging now towards the half tilas. And then I continue all around in the same way, picking up round 15, three millimeter fire polished bead, round 11, three millimeter fire polished bead, round 15. And then I bead only through one Miyuki Delica bead, bead. I fill in a bicone into this gap between the two pairs of half tilas and I bead in the same way all around the motif. I'm curious, by the way, that can you make a decision? Always on, on Mondays, I published bead embroidery tutorials. And on Fridays, I brought you bead weaving tutorials. Do you have a favorite out of the two? Can you make a de decision? What do you like more, bead embroidery or bead weaving? I think I like, well, I not, not think, I, I'm pretty sure that I like bead embroidery more. However, it tends to be, I think, more time consuming. I love it because it gives me lots of freedom and I can create all kinds of shapes and use all kinds of different material because the fabric gives me the possibility to attach whatever I would like to attach to it in whatever shape. While when I am working with bead weaving, then I have to come up with a sturdy construction on its own without the help of the fabric. But then all those possibilities, sometimes I'm trying again and again and again until I find what works the best. And that's pretty time consuming. So I, 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 I love bead embroidery more, but I make more bead woven jewels because it can be a quicker experience. <laughs> And Honey likes them too. Cheryl likes them too. And she likes loom work too. I have never tried loom work except like some very, very basic experiences when I was a kid. Lutka also likes both. Julie likes bead embroidery. Elena likes both. Colin likes bead weaving. But did you try any of the bead embroidered designs, Corinne? Now I can't recall if I have seen uh, bead embroidered pieces from you. I apologize. Nicoline just wo uh, woke up. Welcome, Nicoline. Katya likes both. Brit Marie says that she never tried bead embroidery. If you would like to, Brit Marie, then I have a full series of basic bead embroidery lessons available. If you navigate to the Beading School TV section on the page, then you will find some free tutorials on the Traveler motif 
to learn all the basics. And then you can continue with the Moonlight Sonata and the Bengal and the Arabesque Garden filigree if you start to like it. And I'm pretty sure that you will start liking it once you try it. Mektab likes both. Shirley likes both. She's going back and forth between them. Claire likes bead weaving. Kata says embroidery gives me more opportunities to grow. That's my feeling too, that I can, uh, I can really bead with bead embroidery what I would, I would like to. That also if I want to add a special thought, a special feeling, a special um, message into a jewel, then it comes to me more naturally with bead embroidery. With bead weaving, I can make pretty. And with bead embroidery, I can tell something. I, it can have a message. At least that's the way how it's working for me. <laughs> and Orit needs to try bead embroidery. Corinne made some, but a long time ago. Faye likes bead weaving, but just started embroidery. Joanna likes them both. I Iris is here, welcome. And Marianne says, I like bead embroidery as it has a lot more possibilities, but just starting with it. And Miriam says, I still don't know what to do with the motif. Doesn't match my filigrees. Cheryl says, buy more filigrees. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, like, um, for me, it's sturdy enough on its own that I don't have to add the filigree behind it. So I'm sure that you will find a solution for it, Miriam. Or if it happens then it's not that it's not sturdy enough, then Marion had a very good idea a couple of weeks ago when she attached her... Uh, motif into a bead embroidered base that she made a circle out of uh, ultra sweet and that gave her help with making the motif sturdy or it will work with a coin from costa rica for the traveler lessons And Maria says, I have never tried it, but it looks nice that you can have many beads. I think it's it's a really good way of also like using up some old favorites and including whatever you would like to. It is says you made me more brave. And that's the best thing that I that that I can hear. I'm so happy if you decide to experiment because that's what makes us grow. You know, uh, a friend, she told me that not always the things that make us feel absolutely comfortable are the ones that are the best for us that st sometimes stepping out of that comfortable zone is what in the long run gives us the most. So being brave and trying new things, that's, that's the way to go, I think. And if you like trying new things and being brave and showing what you can do, then make sure to watch Coffee Time with Erika next week, but not Tuesday, but Monday, same, uh, same time as today. So 5, uh, 5 p.m. Central European time, but it will be on Monday, not on Tuesday.
And Miriam says, I love it very sturdy. So just trying or good idea on an embroidery base. Uh, look up Marion's piece or Marion, if you are here still and maybe can advise Miriam. I think it was a really, really nice, uh, nice piece. I think it was the melodrama and it was included in, uh, in one of the club designs articles. But please correct me if if I'm if I'm mistaken and it was something else. But I I think it was the melodrama. And Cheryl says there is this week's teasing. <laughs> I'm 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 uh, I'm a teaser. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I hope you like all the different things that that we are bringing to you <laughs> and I am teasing you with because I, I really enjoyed and seeing you having being happy with them. So <laughs> so I'm I'm pretty sure that you will you will like what I, I, I have to say on, on Monday. And Donna says, likeness embroidery, uh, like uh, a lot, but I find I'm not great at designing something at all. I think that if I uh, if I were to do something on a grander scale, I would need probably the full month just to come up with a design. That is actually something that we need to accept, that designing, it takes time. It's rarely works out the way that I imagine it some way and then I start doing it and and then it works out exactly how I how I imagined it. I had maybe especially with embroidery with bead weaving it's somehow easier for me maybe because I'm doing <laughs> at least one new design every week. And now, by the way, I'm adding groups of four Miyuki Delicas between the round 11 and between the combination of round 15, Delica, Bicon, Delica, round 15. So I think that also if you keep designing and exercising and designing and designing, even if it doesn't come to you easy, then after a while, your brain just learns the way to, to create and to design. But also it's a lot about like accepting it that it is not easy. And it comes with trials and errors and trials again until you find what you like the most. But it helps, I think, a lot if you look at all the all the times when you need to cut apart something and start anew that that was not a failure that was an experiment and you learned what did not work and to know the way it's not only about knowing what works but it's also about knowing what doesn't work so all those trials and all those times when you need to cut something, they also lead you closer to what you would like to make or make easier when you create the next time. <laughs> and Marian says in the meanwhile that indeed it was the melodrama. So thank you, Marian. And it is included in the Club Designs Melodrama article where we collected all the different versions of melodrama beaded by members of the Beading School Club. <laughs> Elena is looking forward to Monday. Joanna also. Kata says sleepless nights till Monday. Cheryl is also looking forward. And Faye says, that's what's so good about bidding school. You can see so many ideas. 
that's definitely i think thank you for saying that Faye. and that's definitely absolutely the best part of of bidding school also for me when i see all your designs and ideas and often i see a discussion online that oh does a designer permit it to like make something else with the original motive than she intended it but for me that's actually the biggest success when i see that you make something different that how i used that particular motive because it means that the motive was good enough that it sparkled your imagination and it gives you ideas and for me personally that's absolutely the best part and i'm really happy when i see all your creations and annie says in the meanwhile i love bead weaving but i'm leaning how to uh, learning how to embed embroider you teaching me thanks thanks for trying it annie Corinne loves Louisiana. Donna says, part of the problem is that the beads and cabochons I have don't necessarily work well together. That's always part of the challenge. And I think that's something, this situation is something that we tried adjusting to when we had the improvisation month that every week during the no one has to be done on lessons we were selecting some of our beads with closed eyes on the fourth week we selected i think three different beads with closed eyes and we had to accept what or hands chose and we had to make the situation somehow somehow work but it can be really frustrating indeed if if nothing seems to work because it happens of course <laughs> And Cheryl says, in fact, adapting a design has been a past competition. So, and who knows what's coming next week, what kind of big news. But if you like bead embroidery and if you like pushing yourself, and now after this month full of learning you feel like you would like you are happy with your progress and you learned a lot and you feel now confident with your bead embroidery skills then maybe you would like to uh, maybe you would like to reward yourself with something nice and if that's the case, then we have prepared some collections for you containing beautiful material for bead embroidery, including handmade art quality cabochons. And they are available on the Beading School Facebook page at the moment. I have posted the link. And all these collections, they contain some of my absolute favorite cabochons made by a friend, an artist. And you can now get them with a significant discount. <laughs> That's about special deals this week. <laughs> And Elena says in the meanwhile, I think it was such a big challenge to accept three colors chosen with closed eyes. But at the same time, it was an eye opener to see that it actually could work if you just add nice additional colors. 
I think that's really how how we felt. At least I did. Sometimes I was puzzled by the beats that I chose unintentionally, but it really pushed me forward in somehow making it work. And in some cases, the result, it did not become my favorite color combination, but every time it taught me something else. <laughs> and Lynn says, thanks bidding school team. Just received my Capuchin box and Ocean box. Both so amazing. Can't wait to use the Rivolis and Chatons. Loved the pencil and chocolate. Oh, Lynn, I'm so happy. <laughs> and enjoy everything. The bicons will be perfect for this one. And Teresa says, I watched a video on YouTube where an artist who colors and already created a piece intentionally decided to do the improv like we did. She picked color pencils with her eyes closed. The finished piece was very, very different, but no less interesting than the original. And this is exactly, that's a very, very nice example, Teresa. And I think often we might even discover that what we thought that we don't like, that it can be actually included in our work and maybe in a certain way we like it and, or maybe not, but still, it is a great exercise, I think. And Miriam already caught one of the collections. <laughs> And she says, hurry up. There are not so many left anymore. True. <laughs> and Diane, hi. And Shirley says, I participated in the Toho challenge the past two times. I had to work with the colors they chose. It was a wonderful challenge to push myself. That sounds really interesting, Shirley. I, oh, I remember you being happy and it was wonderful. I remember your piece. <laughs> and in the meanwhile, I got to step eight and nine. And in step eight, I will be adding the combination of Miyuki Delica 11, size 15 round seed bead and another Miyuki Delica 11 over the round 11s between the fire polished beads. So this is how I bead all around. And <laughs> Iris is shopping. <laughs> and Miriam says, just stitched the motif to a non-matching filigree, but it looks nice. I think so. I'm curious which one you chose. Miriam, and I think that sometimes it does not have to match perfectly, that if it has, this one has six points or like six petals, if we take it as a flower, but it doesn't necessarily has to be a filigree with six corners. It can be something else too. But I'm, I'm really curious that which one did you chose, uh, choose for it? And Annie says, I received my cup chain box, love them so much. Now I can finish my internet earrings. <laughs> Enjoy beading, Annie. And Lynn says, I have never bought a Rivoli before. Now I have dozens. Guess I will have to refine my bezeling. The new colors are gorgeous. Had to call my beady friend in Texas to show her all the goodies. <laughs> Oh, the ocean one is the best, I think, Lynn. You made a great choice. And I'm happy that you are happy. <laughs> and the rivalries, I think they can really they come really handy because when I am 
for example, connecting two motifs to each other, then I like to include sometimes, uh, for example, an eight millimeter bezel shot on in between or a Rivoli, and it makes a necklace super special when you have, for example, three motifs and in between, in between bezeled, peyote bezeled Rivoli's. So I think you will make a good use of what's included in the box. <laughs> and Miriam says, please mention the rainbow box. I still have Christmas, Hanukkah and birthday. <laughs> then a big happy celebration and big happy congratulations to you, Miriam. <laughs> I also have mine here still next to me and uh, I also uh, I also did not put the goodies away yet to the organizers I am just keeping the box here next to my <laughs> next to my uh, computer <laughs> so many of you said at the beginning that you don't know yet that what are you going to make from the motif. Could you make a decision in the meanwhile? I'm curious. And Miriam says, the ocean box is gorgeous as well, but the rainbow is blasting everything. <laughs> in the rainbow, you can really find everything. And I know that some of you were surprised that the colors were like not the very vibrant shouting colors, but more like soft and pastel. But I chose them intentionally actually to make it like easy to combine. And there are all, all the shades of the rainbow that, that I said, uh, you can imagine, I wanted to say that you can imagine, but you don't have to imagine the shades of the rainbow. They are very precise. <laughs> so I followed the shades of the rainbow, but I wanted to make it a uh, pastel and, and softer a little bit to make it easier to combine in whatever style you like. <laughs> Cheryl is using uh, the rainbow box contents for Katy Dean's super special box that she designed. That's such a pretty one. Katy Dean was uh, the guest teacher in Seed Beads and More in the previous month. And Katy is a good friend of mine. <laughs> and uh, she designed a beautiful little box where she used crystals from the Precios, a romantic box. And I'm so happy to, to hear that you are using the rainbow Cheryl. I think I did an amazing job with it. <laughs> Teresa has a box for all the boxes. <laughs> That's so funny. Teresa, I hope you will take a picture for us later and post it. <laughs> In the meanwhile, <laughs> I am adding the pen ultimate combination of Delica and round 15 and another Delica. And now I am moving on to the last petal of this flower. And Lynn says, I have finished all my May bead embroidery projects. The last one I used a mother of birth degree, very different. We'll post it later. Loved all your projects, great new techniques. Thank you, Lynn. And I'm really curious of your mother of pearl filigree. And, and, and I'm super happy that, that the projects brought you new ideas and you learned from them. It was, it was 
really a nice time also when I was designing them for you. I shot myself in in my beading room for a week or two and I made lots of notes and I made lots of plans. I was thinking like what would be the most valuable for you that that you can use further in your beading journey. I did not want to uh, create like one specific pattern, but as Anita or administrator here in the Seed Beats and More group, she asked me to bring you advanced level bead embroidery classes. Then my intention was rather to bring you new ways of thinking and new ideas and sharing with you how I was thinking when I was beading the different the different jewels but to giving you like a compass and guideline to create your own pieces and not necessarily only to only to follow the precise instructions of course that's also very possible and I am happy to see also if you do, of course, the same. But my intention was to like to give you a guide instead of one specific pattern. And Ginny says, I got my, I got my, uh, where is Ginny? Okay, I got my first L2 Studio Cab and bracelet bases and ring bases. Now I have so many things I want to make, but I have my yard all torn up. We planted a tree, dug out a row of roses, a circle of hosts, as enrolled a gross bird bath to the ditch. Bidding is on the back burner till I get my work done. That's a lot to do, Ginny. Your garden is so beautiful. The pictures you posted earlier. But I hope that you can get back to reading school soon. <laughs> and Manuela also has a box for her boxes. <laughs> and hi, Tanya. <laughs> Tanya woke up in New Zealand just now. <laughs> Enjoy your coffee, <laughs> morning coffee, if you have one. And hello, Natalie. And Faye says, I've got the signature box, ocean and forest boxes, but haven't used anything yet as I am still enjoying their gorgeousness. <laughs> Teresa says, oh my, did you just use penultimate in a sentence? Nice. See, we can't possibly laugh at your grasp of English. I'm not kidding or teasing either. You are getting more efficient in your English usage. That's gross. That's gross, my dear Erica. Thank you, Teresa. I also learned recently the pronunciation of miscellaneous. We have met some friends and one of them is only one of them is a native English speaker. And then I just had to ask him what is the pronunciation. And then we had fun. And during our conversation, we had we challenged ourselves and everyone had to include the word miscellaneous. <laughs> How we were talking. <laughs> so, and I, after the penultimate, <laughs> petal i also did the ultimate petal and my louisiana motif is finished now nicely matching my first one and if you have any questions left ladies then, then please let me know i'm going to say goodbye for this week now I am looking forward to seeing all your creations in the Beading School Club and in the Seed Beads and More group. And please don't forget that next week we will meet on Monday, 5 p.m. Central European time. So no one has to be the one time <laughs> instead of Tuesday. And I hope that you had 
you had lots of fun while reading together. I am very curious to see your pieces. Don't forget about the beautiful Alto Studio collections, if there are still some available <laughs> on the page. This was my favorite. And I wish you lots of creative ideas and looking forward to seeing your bead embroidery pieces too. Goodbye, ladies.